Hey there everybody, welcome to Lisbon and you join me at the international launch of the all new and very sexy Genesis G70 Shooting Brake. <laughs> 2021 has been a busy year for the Genesis brand, relaunching themselves back in Europe and the UK with four new models, the G and G V70 and the G and G V80. Now granted those models are available in the US, so if you're after something a little bit different, perhaps something the Americans can't buy, well Genesis now have you covered with this, the all new G70 shooting brake. And I am here in Lisbon at its international launch and I'm going to take the shooting brake around for a drive and let you know what it's all about. When it comes to styling, you cannot deny that the G70, whether it be a shooting brake or saloon, is a very distinctive and good looking car. I do love the huge crest grille and quad headlights. They are designed to mimic the Genesis badge, but it looks very sporty and purposeful and instantly recognizable as a Genesis. Now, of course, I'm on the launch of the shooting brake, so I shouldn't really be talking about the front of the G70 because the headlines are all at the back of the car sat in the front of the G70 shooting brake. It is exactly the same as the G70 saloon, which is no bad thing. It's a very comfortable, well screwed together interior, but doesn't quite feel as special as the GV70 SUV, but you get the feeling that this has been designed to take on the likes of the BMW 3 Series, Audi A4 and Mercedes C-Class. Now, when it comes to interior quality, yes, it is actually really good with soft touch plastics and leather on the top of the dash, on the main dashboard, as well on the center console. So I can lean my knee against that if I'm doing a long journey. So that is really positive. Now, getting in and out of the G70 is a little bit tricky because it is a little bit lower and wider than most of its rivals, which does mean you have to kind of bump your head down a little bit lower than usual. But if you have any kind of mobility issues, I would recommend the GV70 SUV and you'll have no problems whatsoever. And just like the G70 Saloon, we've got a 10.25 inch display and it is a touch screen only. And it is actually pretty responsive and you've got things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Then in front of the steering wheel, we have got a lovely digital display. There's actually a 3D digital display and it's very um, unique because there's a sensor at the bottom that tracks where your pupils are. So it kind of turns as you're looking, which is a bit weird when you get, kind of get told it, but it looks really cool when you're driving and I do like the animations as well. Then on the center console, we have got a nice mixture of buttons. So we have got some shortcut buttons for the infotainment system. We have got some rotary dials for the dual zone climate control. And then underneath there, we have got a little bit of storage for some wireless charging, USB and a 12 volt socket. And that's very handy. And we have got a couple of cup holders just behind the gear lever, but they are on the right hand side. So I can rest my arm here and that does mean I'm not going to knock them whilst I'm driving. So that's something I do like. Now the door bin is of a decent size. You can get a medium sized bottle of drink in there, but it's not lined with any fabric. So loose items will rattle around a bit. But yeah, I'm actually really liking the front of this G70 shooting brake. I mean, it is exactly the same as the G70 saloon. It's a lovely, comfortable place to be. A nice variety of leathers and plastics, and it does feel like a quality product. And now I think it's time we have a little sit in the back and see what it's like in terms of rear space. Sat in the back of the shooting brake, it does feel more spacious than its saloon counterpart. And as a result, I feel I could do a nice long journey in the back of the shooting brake and come out the other end feeling nice and relaxed. Now that driver's seat is not in my driving position. It has come back a few inches, but I've got an okay amount of knee room and headroom is definitely an improvement over the saloon version. But if you're over six foot tall, you might start to feel a little bit cramped and a bit claustrophobic, especially with the dark headlining. But in terms of cubby spaces, we've got some good sized door pockets. We can get a small bottle of drink in there. And we have got your centre armrest with a couple more cup holders. So that is handy. Of course, yes, we have got our airplane style pockets on the backs of the front seats. And it's not devoid of features either. We have got heated seats in the back here and two USB charging inputs. So kids back here can charge their mobile devices. So that is something. The windows are of a good size and I do like the fact they do allow a good amount of lighting. So that again is very handy here back in the shooting brake. But yeah, I'm actually liking sat, being sat here in the back of the shooting brake. And I now think it's time we have a little look at the back. So this is the reason why I'm here because of the shooting brake body design. And I think we can all agree looking at that three quarter view, it is a very distinctive and beautiful rear end. I have to say it has got a sexy bum on it. But it's not just the look of the car 
that I love. I mean, it is purposeful at the same time, but there are lots of little design features I really do like. So we have got the quad tail lights and they do flow into the boot lid as well. And it does give it a very distinctive look. Also, because of that shooting brake name and it's not actually been called an estate, we have actually got the rear glass screen that goes up underneath the spoiler and on top of the roof almost. So it does give a kind of a classic shooting brake slash coupe look to the car. And also the brake light as well, which doesn't just go across the top of the spoiler. It actually has a little kink in there as well, which is very unique. Sticking with the back of the shooting brake, let's talk about practicality. Now, to get the boot open, you press this little button here underneath the rear wiper. I do really like that. And when the boot is open, you're presented with 465 litres of space, which is 135 more than the saloon version of the G70. And as you can see, we've got a nice wide load area, which is perfect for a couple of suitcases or a few weekend bags. But just know it does get a little bit narrow here at the bottom of the boot lip. So loading a large bulky item, say like a wardrobe or chest of drawers, might be a little bit tricky. So just be aware of that. It's not devoid of features either. We got a couple of sturdy tethering hooks, a 12 volt socket and a couple of handles to get the rear seats down. There's also an extra couple of netted areas on each side to stop items rolling around the boot floor. Speaking of the rear seats, we have got a 40-20-40 split, so you can get the middle seat down if you want to load any longer items through in your shooting brake. Now, underneath the boot floor, we have got a bit of additional storage. However, if I take out the parcel shelf, like so, you can't put it underneath the boot floor for storage. So that's a little bit disappointing, but then again, this isn't really that big. But all in all, I am actually really impressed with the boots of the new shooting brake. It is a very practical and brilliant and stylish family estate car or shooting brake car. But I think it's enough time of, well, looking at the boot capacity and that. Let's take it for a drive. So once you start driving the G70 shooting brake, first impressions are really positive. It feels like a very comfortable, practical family car. And I could definitely do a long journey in this G70 and come out the other end feeling nice and relaxed. Now, visibility is a little bit hit and miss on the shooting brake. Now, just like the saloon, looking out front is absolutely fine. The A pillars are not too thick, which is a pleasant surprise. However, when you look over your shoulder, you do find there is quite a thick C pillar. So it does mean you have got a bit of a blind spot there. But of course, this being a Genesis, you've got that blind spot monitoring, you've got the blind spot camera. So basically you are catered for when it comes to safety. It's just a little bit disappointing. That is quite a thick C pillar. And then rear visibility is absolutely fine. In fact, yeah, it's just like an estate car, which is really good. So yeah, first impressions of this new G70 shooting brake. Very positive indeed. Now, when it comes to the trim levels in the shooting brake range, it's just like all other Genesis cars. There are three to choose from. You got premium, luxury, and then you got the sporty looking Sportline version, which is what I've got here. And again, I recommend going for the sporty version because although you got all the sporty looks to the car, it doesn't really hamper the performance. You haven't got stiffer springs or anything like that. So as a result, it means you still have a very comfortable car that just looks really good. And another thing as well is like Genesis don't say there's an entry level version to the shooting brake range, essentially because of the amount of kit you've got on there, it's, it's kind of like picking a lifestyle vehicle. You're going for the one that best suits you. So if it was me personally, then of course, yeah, I'm gonna go for the Sportline version and um, I definitely don't think I'd be uh, disappointed at all. Now, when it comes to the engines, there are technically two to choose from, but there are three power outputs. So there are two versions of the two litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, and there is a single 2.2 litre turbocharged diesel engine. Now the petrols produce either 194 or 241 brake horsepower, depending on which version you go for. And the diesel is a 2.2 litre four cylinder turbocharged unit producing 197 brake horsepower. All cars have an eight-speed automatic and they are all rear-wheel drive. And in terms of this diesel, I'm now literally just getting onto the motorway here in Lisbon. And it's actually nice and refined. It's settling down. Yeah, it feels absolutely fine. When you are driving at low speed, you can hear a little bit of diesel grumble, but it's not too intrusive. Now the petrols I do really like as well. They do feel a lot more refined, but again, if you put your foot down, 
then yes, you are going to hear that petrol engine roar. But again, once it settles down, once you're kind of on the motorway and driving, it's absolutely fine. And it's, yeah, there's a nice combination there of engines to choose from. But at the moment, of course, there are no hybrids, no plugins, and there are no EVs on the way as of yet. So uh, yeah, if you are after a, an eco car, then these might not be the ones to go for just yet. But then again, Genesis have just announced their third new EV, which is the GV70 or electric GV70. So that's definitely something to look forward to. As I mentioned, all cars come with an eight speed automatic and it's actually a pretty decent box. If you drive in a relaxed fashion, it goes through the gears nice and smoothly. You can barely feel them or hear them change gear. But it is one of those that if you do suddenly put your foot down, you can catch it off guard a little bit and there is a little bit of hesitation if you want to do a quick overtake. Of course, you can put it into sport and sport plus mode and that does make the gear shift a bit quicker, but it's not as smooth, of course, if you just leave it in normal. So that's just something to be aware of. So what's the ride and handling like in this new shooting brake? Well, ride-wise, and I'm driving on a motorway now at around 60 miles an hour, it's absolutely lovely. It deals with the bumps and imperfections very well. It feels a bit more comfortable than the G70 Saloon, and I think that's because the shooting brake was actually designed and tested on European roads. And as a motorway cruiser, I have no issues with this whatsoever. As I said earlier, I could do a long journey in the shooting brake and come out the other end feeling nice and relaxed. So that's one big positive for the car. And yes, of course, if you go over any big potholes or manhole covers, it does boom a little bit and resonate into the cabin. But then again, all cars in this segment do. But yeah, in terms of just the ride quality, I am really impressed by it. It feels very compliant. Refinement levels are pretty decent as well. Now there's a little bit of wind noise coming off the wing mirrors and a little bit of tire roar coming into the cabin. But again, other than that, it's absolutely fine. and. It's not too intrusive, so I do feel like this is a very relaxing car to be in, especially if you've got your family with you as well. So yeah, in terms of ride and refinement, it is all very positive here in the shooting brake. So what's the handling like in the shooting brake? Well, if you watched my first drive review of the G70 Saloon, I described the handling as absolutely fine. But having an opportunity to drive the shooting brake on these twisty roads outside of Lisbon, I can say actually it's a lot more playful than I had originally anticipated. Now because of that rear wheel drive setup it does mean that you can get the uh, tail out if you perhaps turn it into sport plus mode and put, give it the beans, but it still doesn't have the same absolute fun factor and communication through the wheel as a 3 series would. And the steering is on the lighter side and it does mean when it comes to kind of ease of driving it's absolutely fine, but also when you want to do things like parking and just driving around at low speed it's an absolute doddle to maneuver so again I will say yes the handling is absolutely fine for day to day but when you get the opportunity to chuck it into a corner and give it some beans then it will reward you it will put a little bit of a smile on your face especially if you put it into sport plus mode so the handling yes is better than I thought with the G70. Now I don't know if it's because of the fact of this has been designed for Europe and we've got a few more twisty roads than the US, but it definitely has paid off. So what are my thoughts on the G70 shooting brake here on its international launch? Well, I think it's an absolutely lovely car to look at. Aesthetically, I think it's gorgeous, particularly in this Sportline trim and and a nice kind of feeling to be a European customer for Genesis and getting something that the rest of the world hasn't got. I know a lot of Americans are not happy with the fact that we've got the shooting brake and they haven't. It is a nice practical element as well to the G70 range and that's definitely going to add an extra string to their bow. It just means now we've got to look forward to the future to see if there is going to be an electric version of the shooting brake and I think that is a car that could do really well for Genesis because it is using things like Hyundai's platforms and Hyundai and Kia well they're doing very well when it comes to electric cars so that technology is going to come onto this side very soon we've already got three cars been announced from Genesis in terms of electrification with the G80 GV60 and electric GV70 
but yeah I'm really impressed with the shooting brake it's got a great amount of practicality to it granted yes it's not a dedicated estate car so it does kind of fall short there but for young families who want something a little bit different and you live in the southeast of England then this could be the perfect car for you because it does stand out it does drive really well it rides really well at the same time and well it looks bloody gorgeous and you'll have something that not many people have seen so yeah the uh, G70 shooting brake I'm really impressed with now one thing I will mention about Genesis is the fact of they want to be different to other brands out there and they have this saying of we come to you so as I mentioned earlier if you do live in the southeast of England you can buy a Genesis and you can have the Genesis experience so when it comes to things like servicing for example they'll come out to you they will give you a courtesy vehicle and you can enjoy the car and enjoy the peace of mind of them kind of putting you first and I think that's a really good feature and as I mentioned before in the G70 being someone who's been in sales and after sales I know what it kind of takes and what you need to do to put the customer first and as that's their main ethos that's a real positive thing to see so yeah I'm really looking forward to just seeing more and more Genesis cars coming into the UK and seeing them slowly expand over the whole UK as well not just in the southeast now on that note i am going to say now thank you very much for watching my first drive review of the genesis g70 shooting brake here in lisbon don't forget to like and subscribe hit the bell notifications icon you know what to do follow me on facebook instagram and twitter stay safe wear a mask keep your social distancing and i will catch you all in the next video so take care everyone and bye bye